One, two, three, action. Hi, this is Tom Rash, the creator of Black Alpha, and you are watching the awesome Groovy TV. <laughs> I'm here with the amazing Tom Rash, the creator of Black Alpha, Denver Comic Con. How the heck are you doing, man? I am doing fantastic. And you know what? Our knees are touching. I feel really close to you in this interview, so i got to lean in, get a little bro we're, hug. We're bonding. We're there bonding. We yeah, exactly. <laughs> no. So how's the Black Alpha world, go what's going on with it these days? Well, uh, let's see. Since I talked to you last, uh, a couple of really great things happened. I ended up getting engaged to my booth, babe. I've got to mention that first, Trisha. Yeah. Congratulations, and, and she's a, she's wonderful. She's a great human being, and congratulations. Thank you, and awesome super nerd. She's got a Yoda tattoo, Star Wars character stickers on the back of her car. So yeah, I picked a good one. Anyway, and then uh, since I talked to you last, Black Alpha actually got option for uh, mobile game TV series development. So awesome. Can you give any details on this at all? Well, I, I can say this much: it takes a while. Um, you know, usually, well, I'll explain real quick to people. Um, when something gets optioned, usually what it means is that uh, a production company or a producer will come in and um, basically say, I want to have the rights to develop this. And then they have to come up with the components, meaning finding like, uh, if they're going to do a movie, find the screenwriter, the team, you know, the director. Um, and it takes a while to do those things sometimes. Right. Or, or uh, you know, and if after a certain amount of time, sometimes it'll lapse, like if they couldn't make things come together. There's always a possibility of that, but we'll think positive. Mm -hmm. um, but at this point, it's just like, I, I know who, they're, who they've been pitching it to, and uh, they're actually going after the Asian market to pitch a mobile game version first, okay. and then do the TV thing afterwards. Now, we've been kind of open to approaching it either as a cartoon series, like you would see on a Cartoon Network or Hulu, or also an animated feature. So, so, so it's an education for me, too, because like every time I talk, there's more moving along. You know, first right. it was Big Bang Theory, then USA Today, yep. and now being option is still a big deal. So I don't want to minimize that. But yeah, I, I've also, like I said, slowly learning a lesson in patience that you, you want it to be all ready and done now. Because I've seen the cartoon in my head for years. Yeah. So I'm just excited when that does become a reality. Well, you actually uh, came up with Black Alpha when you were a kid, or at least younger. So your younger self has got to be just be high-fiving the crap out of you about daily. Somewhat. Well, and also still that, like, I, I can't believe it. I think that, well, any of this stuff, like when I've had my merchandise materials yeah. and um, seeing it in USA Today, the stuff in Big Bang, I mean, the kid in me is always excited. Right. And uh, not to tell a, you know, violin story here, but, uh, you know, I was a very shy kid, and so I spent a lot of times, especially in grade school, by myself, drawing, reading my comic books, watching Star Trek and Star Wars, and so... Like in sixth grade, uh, the other kids would go out and play recess. Well, I'd go stand in the corner of the school by myself and hum the Black Alpha movie theme or the TV show theme. And then I would fantasize like, well, I hope I get interviewed for TV stuff or stuff like this. You know, basically this is modern TV right. magazines. And so I've actually gotten to do all that stuff. So, yeah, the kid in me will always be like, in a way, I can't believe I'm here or that it's right. moving along thus. So. That is so awesome, man. It's always, it's always good to you know have the dream become reality. Is you know even even if it's in segments, but what you've achieved is freaking awesome. Well, thanks. I appreciate it. I mean, yeah, I, I have to remind myself, and sometimes friends do that because for the amount of time I've had this in the public eye, it's moved along pretty quick in the last few years. But I because it's been such a big part of my life, yeah. it seems like it's taking forever. But I have to put it into perspective, right? Right. And uh, and for an independent creator, yeah, I mean, I've been able to gain really great opportunities and traction for, for a new property that most people haven't heard of yet. You know what I mean? So yeah, I'm grateful for that. And like I said, it just seems like it's always one more thing right. that kind of comes into play, you know, as far as opportunities go. And so that's, yeah, that's very exciting. Uh, so what's coming up next for Black Alpha? I know you got the TV, the TV show option and all that other stuff, but it would say with comic books and other things. Well, I, I ended up, uh, I have a Hollywood screenwriting partner named Adam Volk, and he actually has issues two through four written. Um, amazing script. It's, it feels like a movie. Okay. He's kind of raised it. And Drew did a good job of writing the first issue, but Adam has kind of even kind of pushed a little bit farther. Um, so he's got that done. It's just a matter of like finding the resources because, um, you know, right now the comic I still create on the side. Mm -hmm. So I'm looking into options, still maybe a Kickstarter too. If, if not me, then maybe hiring an artist that can stay with the style of the book to get it done because, once again, there's a patience lesson. But Reading what Adam has done with my characters is like like I'm sitting back as an audience member again right. and kind of seeing the movie on spool. So I really want to get these done. So my focus is 
keeping my fingers crossed is to have the next three issues of the first miniseries done by okay. next Denver Comic Con. That's the goal. Okay. okay uh, if not, at least, you know, like two or three, you know, up to that point. Because, right. I mean, everyone's been really cool. I've had people come back that bought, that have been here the last year or two, bought the first issue. They bought the one with the variant cover. And, uh, and they've been very patient, but it's nice to know they're excited to, to continue the story and find out where it's headed, right? Well, and, and even the ships are cool. I mean, because uh, I've been paying attention to Black Alpha now for, what, like three years? We, 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 we've been, yeah, we've been chatting. Ships are cool. You know, the, the whole, like, sort of, like, vibe of Black Alpha is cool. There's, the characters are awesome. Um, yeah, I mean, like, yeah, it's just really good stuff, man. And, yeah, you got to be proud. But, uh, yeah. So... When the movie happens, like, uh, is there going to be wicked ship battles? Well, here's the thing. There's going to be a little bit. Um, but, but I've sort of conceded that um, I'm, I'm obviously very strongly influenced by, well, by my influences. Um, right. Star Wars does the awesome ship battles, you know, especially with the dogfight stuff. They establish a style. So when anyone else mimics that, it's almost like it seems a little pale in comparison. Okay. Star Trek has, with the big starships, almost like submarine battles. Right. There will be, I would like to see there, whether it's a film or cartoon, I mean, there will be ship battles, but it's more so taking the superhero dynamic and actually having uh, really cool battles between these superpowered characters on alien terrain and alien planets. Awesome. So that's what my focus is going to be. Okay. But occasionally, I mean, yeah, there, there might be like, you know, like the Millennium Falcon uh, pursuit through the asteroid field. There might be a version of that. I mean, trust me, I've had so many different looping images of what the Aramis looks like because it goes super fast and right. going through any kind of cosmic terrain will be fun. And like I said, there might be a way to kind of maybe creatively try and do a different dynamic as far as space battles go, awesome. you know, so. Awesome, man. But I was going to say I'll have to nerd out about one extra thing. I, yeah. I started actually doing a, a cutaway and for what that is for the uninitiated is, a, is usually it's a, an illustration showing like you've taken a section of the hull of the ship off and um, you get to see what the rooms, the, the compartments. So I've been doing that and that's really fun because at cool. some point when we get licensing and merchandising where this stuff can be mass produced, I want to do a bigger model of the ship, probably roughly about maybe a foot and a half and mm -hmm. actually have a little black alpha figure you can put inside it. So once again, that'll be the seven year old being, you know, doing all dancing and backflips and all that <laughs> stuff. So high five in the crap out of you. Exactly, yep. Well, I'll high five you now. Boom! Thank you so much, man. Good to see you, brother. Cheers. Hey, this is Groovy. I'm here with the amazing Tom Rash, creator of Black Alpha, Denver Comic Con.